When I began to work on the rim system, probably around 1973, my first theory was get the pressure off of the shell, get the hardware off the shell, and the shell will be free to vibrate. So I had a lot of different ways of thinking about it, but my main theory, that was it. Get the pressure off the shell. So I came up with this little device. It's really just a basic piece of wood. And the idea was that the drum is going to be held by the hoops. And this one went on top, the bottom one slipped in, held the drum from the bottom. And if I just pop this on here real fast, as you can see, it was slotted. So as the drum is being held, no pressure is on the shell. There's just a little bit of a gap in this one area. And this was right here to keep the drum from rocking back and forth. But this held the drum and it held it fairly securely. And I built this for four of the toms, this being probably the smallest one, the 12 inch. And I had one on a 14 inch and also a 13 inch. Uh, but I learned something after a few months. It worked pretty good for maybe the first two or three months. And all of a sudden, drums didn't sound as good, and I couldn't quite understand why. And I'll show you. Okay, what was happening was something very subtle, and it happened over a period of weeks, months. All I knew is that the drum started to choke out again, especially the larger drums. Uh, the 12 inch still sounded fairly decent, but I had a 14 by 8 and also a 14 by 14 that I was hanging from a piece of wood like this. The structure was longer, but it gripped the hoop at the top and also the hoop at the bottom. And I want to show you exactly what it does to the drum when you hold the drum off its center of gravity. The conclusion that I eventually came to that drove me into the rim system concept was the fact that you cannot in any way hold a drum off its center of gravity. It just is not going to work, and I'll show you why. And there's most of the companies all make systems now that use an off the center of gravity system. So it's not going to work. It's going to choke the drum out. You're going to lose certain frequencies. And again, you're going to possibly damage the drum. Here's what happened to my drums after about three months. Now, if you take a look at this, this hoop, when you see the hoop on the drum, it's supposed to be centered. And when you put the head on the drum, this hoop will automatically center itself from the drum head. However, what it did over time is that the hoop began to be pulled out of shape. And if you take a look at this, now I, I don't have the head on here so I can tell you, show you roughly what it did. Uh, I had a Gretsch drum and it basically took the die cast hoops and it ovaled the hoops. And it, this is essentially what it would look like. Uh, when I took the drum, uh, took the holder off, the side of the drum that I had this holding the drum actually pulled the hoop and ovaled it out of shape, pulled the hoop against the shell and also pulled the hoop and the head all together so that you had a big gap underneath the drum head here. You had no gap underneath the drum head here. So that, that it was entirely pulled out of shape and on the 14 by 14 inch drum, it actually ovaled the hoop to a point where I was the hoop was unusable. I basically had to throw it away and buy a new hoop, but buy a, mainly for the top hoop. The bottom hoop was pushed out of shape, but the top hoop was actually pulled out of round. So that was uh, a real, um, eye-opener for me because I realized it, it doesn't work. It worked temporarily until it pulled the drum out of shape and it was on, almost unplayable at that time. So moved on to some other ways and uh, pretty much found out some other conclusions from that. But that's the one using this system. Okay, well, I found out this didn't work. Not a great idea. Thought it was going to work. Didn't work. So I had to abandon the idea that getting the pressure off of the shell and placing it someplace else was going to work. So I got rid of this one, took those off my drums, and I thought, well, instead of attaching to the hoops, I will attach to the adjacent tension rods. Now, there's several companies today that are doing this, and I'll show you why this is not a good idea also.
What I did was attach it to the tension rods, the Jason tension rods, and I had a little pressure foot down here. Now, if you look at this, let me show you. I just have a standard old Ludwig mount on there, and since the drum, again, since it's off its center of gravity, the drum wants to do this. So I put these on the tension rods, had this little rubber pressure foot to hold the drum, and left it go. However, after about six weeks again, the drum started to do the same thing it did with the wood. It started to pull these tension rods out of shape and put pressure on the castings. So I still had the head pulling away from this side, creating a, a huge gap under here, uh, and on the other side of the drum, pulling the head tightly against the shell and I wasn't getting any better sound. It first appeared that it sounded pretty good, but after, after four or five weeks, it started doing the exact same thing that the first one did. So if there's anything I learned from these two that didn't work, it was the fact that you cannot hold a drum in any way that it creates pressure on any part of the shell or the tension rods or the castings or the hoop. There had to be a better way to do this. That's when I started to come up with the RIMS concept.